I am sitting here today with a monster bass player, artist, sideman, content creator, podcaster, and all around superhero of the bass, <laughs> Josh Paul. You might know Josh from his impressive artist roster with names like Suicidal Tendencies, Infectious Grooves, Daughtry, Everlast, Kelly Osborne, and many others, or maybe from him hosting the Killer Dunlop Podcast Bass Freaks, or perhaps from his Instagram page where he just seems to be an absolute idea factory, pumping out <laughs> incredible mini songs consisting of monster beats and absolutely ferocious bass lines and technique that make me simultaneously inspired and ready to just hang it all up and pursue accounting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to call him a friend and an inspiration, Mr. Josh Paul. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for all the kind and um, uh, unnecessary uh, compliments. Thank you so much, though. I appreciate you. <laughs> I knew, you know, I did your podcast a while yeah, back. I, yeah. I, you, thank you, you for were, doing that, by the oh, way. Oh, man, you were nice enough to ask me. And I remember trying to flip the script and talk to you and ask you some questions and pay you some compliments. And you were like, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll have none of that. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's just so it's so fun to flip the script and be able to uh, ask you some things and just, man, just really praise you for the beast that you are. I mean, it's true. The, the first thing I want to ask you has to do with your production and uh, your okay. creative process because it is scary. And the people I talk to, like I was just talking to Jonathan Marin, who was oh, like, cool. that dude, how does he do it? Like how, what is the process? How is he so ferocious? And so I guess what I would love to ask you is, can you talk about that creative process? When you're thinking about putting a post up yeah. on Instagram, yeah. what are you doing in terms of, programming beats and also what is maybe your go-to instrument or gear for the stuff that you write that you put up in that vertical content format okay well it's it's not going to sound very exciting or um uh, being a mastermind or genius in any way honestly the, it's it's mostly just um for me i really started going after just having some fun and doing videos around when the pandemic started, I was doing yeah. it somewhat before, but that actually gave me time to do it. Yes. And I just started, um, messing around with bass lines and I thought I'd throw it down, you know, from the beginning, baby steps, baby steps. But yeah. what it did do and what I realized was that I was, I was becoming pretty creative in what I was coming up with. So it was almost like mini songs. And then I just, was inspired to do more and more and more and more and more of the um and really what that did was give me an outlet yeah a, a freedom to just do whatever i wanted with no agenda and i think honestly that allowed me to just kind of flow hmm. initially and even still i mean i don't necessarily plan stuff unless it's like a new piece of gear sure. or it's a new you know awesome bass um, but what I'll do is I will create a drum groove or pull one from like splice and then cut it up. And if it's something I'll listen to a few times and usually it'll inspire me to just throw something down. And if it's not cool within the first, like few minutes then i'm on to the next yeah right so right but you have to be ruthless like that sometimes yeah, right or like well, you have to feel that fire and i think and i think there being no sort of agenda behind it mm. allows that yes. sort of create a freedom and sometimes you know when you're under a deadline or when you're under um you know some requests or recommendations by whether it be band members or label people or management or other producers or something like that, it really can hinder any yes. sort of creativity you might have because you're scared. Oh shit. Excuse yeah. me. Can I say that? You can absolutely okay. swear um, away if you want. All good. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, uh, you know, you're, you, you start to second guess yourself. And, and one of the things that I really recommend for, for, players and creators out there to do is just let your let your creativity flow don't be afraid of it mm. and experiment but um i'll use logic pro and i'll 
come up with somewhat little mini structures and um, most of it is bass. I will add some keys and stuff and mm. I never really play guitar because, um, well, number one, I didn't have a guitar for a while. <laughs> so, so I just yeah. tried to adapt. Actually, this is another thing. I wanted to see how far I could go um, adapting pieces of music that just had bass and drums yeah. and to see if it, um, you know, if it touched people the way that I was feeling it. So, and so you're using, and you're using splice. Are you, are you finding loops in splice and then modifying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Doing that kind of thing. Man. I'll cut them up and then I'll mix and match things or I'll just create the beats myself. Yeah. And what do you, when you're using, with drum production, I think for me, something, mm -hmm. a, a hindrance or like a roadblock for my creativity yeah. sometimes is drums, just drum production. And I've tried different platforms and I hear that from people of like, ah, like how do I, I have a beat in my head. Mm -hmm. Do you have a process of like when you're creating um, your own stuff, is that through splice, like their samples or are you doing, using some other program to do it? Uh, I have, I have a few different things that I've used. Um, um, superior drummer. Yeah. Um, also the, uh, machine stuff is cool. And yeah. then, you know, you get a MIDI controller and you just play some beats. Even if you have like, I think on, uh, Max, MacBooks, you can just use the, uh, keyboard typing too. That's right. I mean, yes. and there are no rules, right? If something comes out cool, awesome. Do right. it that you don't have to do it a certain way. Of course. Yeah. There yeah. isn't some, uh, gear that you have to buy. No, pr probably no. cool stuff. Just lurking in garage band that I just had. There, there really you know? is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there right. really is. Yeah, man. Well, so. it's, it's, can you talk to the bass production a little bit? Um, because your sounds are so, they seem really intentional. And it's funny because I feel like I've asked you this before and you're like, ah, man, I just kind of plug some stuff in. But it, boy, if that's true, it's so demoralizing. <laughs> but, no, it, but it's, but it's, it honestly, if you saw the process, you'd be yeah. like, oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's just um, not being afraid to experiment. Yeah. So I'll plug in a pedal or um, go through neural um, DSP. Yep. And um, I'll, I'll kind of have an idea of what the groove is or what whatever the melodic content might be. Yeah. Um, and if something is working, I'll kind of tweak it a little bit and I'll, I'll know right away because if the sound inspires me or it inspires a part, then that's the right sound. Right. Exactly right. So you're, yeah. you're leaning on that spark of inspiration. Absolutely. And if you get that, then do you just pursue that thing. Yeah. 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 Once it's there, it's there. It's like, right. you know, and then also there's like, okay, well, where do I just knock this shit off? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure. Right. Like when to stop yeah. because yeah. you, you probably could go for hours, right? You get, yeah, you get going and I mean, I, I've, I've also been afforded, you know, some time to be able to sit down and, and take the time to, mm. to just flow a little bit. Yes. Um, I know a lot of people don't have a ton of time always, but I think that with under the right circumstances, you know, in those moments, you just get in there and not worry about anything around you, not worrying about the gear that you have. Yeah. Just try to make do with what you have and try to come up with something cool. And it's, you know, um, a lot of my career has been adaptation. Hmm. adapting with and, and part of that is just growing up um with not a lot of money sure. you know so you you kind of make do with what you have let's see what we can do with this and now i kind of challenge myself with that yeah because sometimes those constraints or the fences around it are actually really awesome because you have to do something with just this one pedal Right. right, but you but you lose sight of that though, in the moment <laughs> when you get all the gear. Like, Damn it! <laughs> yeah. Or or when you don't have it, you're like, mm. man, if I could have this, then I could do this. Yes. If I could have this, then I could do that, and that mm. goes with life in general, right? Mm. The grass is always greener, but of course, um, um, having like um, I remember before I had it, uh, Logic, I had just GarageBand. Yeah, and uh, I would be on there, and and I remember when I first started sort of putting ideas together and songs and 
you know, I was a little insecure because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I thought you had to be this producer engineer who knew everything there is to know about tones and computers and all this stuff. But I started putting little things together and just making it work with it probably. And now knowing a little bit more that I do, it wasn't the correct way to do it, but what is the correct way to do it? Right. And I brought it over to this producer who is a hip hop producer. He's all, you did that on, on garage band. It's like, yeah, is it okay? I thought he was, I was waiting for him to tell me how shitty it was. Yes. He's, oh, man, yes. you need to step up your game or something like sure. that. But he was impressed that it had all of these different elements that you can tell you use to, to just make do. And there's something about the sound of that, right? Of like not necessarily having all the best plugs or right. all the instruments within arm's reach that makes you grab more interesting choices maybe. I think that's maybe the case for for what my style has. I hate to say that, well, my style, but. No, oh, you um, have a style. I mean, you can say um, that. That is definitely one of the elements of, of my style is just that um, using uh, like a gritty, grungy sound. It may not be the best sound in the world, but it's trashy so you come up with a trashy part you know yeah and does it work i don't know sometimes maybe not for everything sure for the stuff that i've been doing it's worked oh it sure has and and if anyone who's watching hasn't checked out josh's instagram it's josh paul i-t-s-j-o-s-h-p-a-u-l instagram and if you need some inspiration it will inspire you or like, like for me, make me maybe want to just be an accountant. (laughs) Oh no, dude. No, honestly, I I learned so much from you and um, all you guys over there all the time, but especially, you know, since we're friends and uh, watching you and, and you explain everything so well, I'm like, Oh, Oh yeah. That makes total sense. Oh, well, I appreciate it. It's funny though. It's like, I see you do it and I go, maybe I ought to spend a little less time explaining and a little more time doing, (laughs) (laughs) but it's, it's, it's really cool. And it's inspiring because, um, yeah, you're not always playing with all of the latest, greatest stuff or all of, you know, like you're not talking about all the plugins and all the, you know, the huge array of effects. It's like you have a voice on the instrument and it is often very gritty and it's just, it's just remarkable. And you mentioned drums and I do want to ask you about this yeah. um, because I, I saw on your wiki that you started out as a drummer. I did. And obviously, you know, I was thinking, oh, can I, you know, I, you know, how has that given you a leg up as a bass player? But we all know that answer. Yeah. Of course yeah. it does. It yeah. gives you a leg up as a bass player. Thinking like a drummer is incredible because we are that bridge right between Absolutely. the harmony and the rhythm. Um, yeah. But But what I wanted to know is what made you switch? I had a, I wanted to be a drummer so bad and my parents lived in a little house and it was like, no way, but drums to me are so cool. And so I can't imagine going from drums to bass. I mean, now I, you know, I love the bass. Yeah. It's the greatest instrument ever, but what made you switch? Uh, we moved into an apartment when I was a little kid (laughs) and uh, the neighbors obviously didn't like a little guy banging on the drums for hours. (laughs) Sure. So um, my grandfather gave me one of his basses and uh, my mom saved up to get me a a shorter bass. Um, So I was running it through uh, a karaoke machine. I love it. With headphones. Yeah. And the neighbors stopped complaining. So <laughs> it meant it meant that life was good. Yes. In the yeah. apartment. <laughs> yeah. You're being we, a good neighbor. Moved, yeah, we moved around a lot uh, when I was a kid. So, you know, lugging a drum kit around is hmm. not really in the cards in the yes. little car we had. So but the bass worked. Did you feel upset about it? Did you feel any kind of way about it? Did you miss the drums? Like how did that land I, with you? Well, I think that uh, the bass was the next best thing, but even better because I could create melodic content and also write songs. Yes. 
And you were interested in, in doing that Always. so early? Yeah. You know, um, when I was a little kid, I did uh, that Don Henley Boys of Summer video. Yes. I was on my right. list of things to ask you. You played drums in the video, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was seven years old and I, I uh, went out for an audition that my mom had heard about. They needed little kid drummers. I was playing drums in my grandfather's Dixieland band. So cool. And, you know, I was a tiny little kid. So some of the kids that I see on like Instagram and things now that are nine, five <laughs> years old, just blow Shredding. my mind. Yes. Blow my mind. It's amazing. I love that. Uh, but so I uh, went to this audition and I got, there was a, I remember there being just a sea <laughs> of children with drumsticks. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, you know, mostly I got it cause I had dark hair, maybe the right look and uh, I could play a little bit. I could yeah. hang on a snare drum, but um, Don Henley yeah. uh, became a family friend and he, he mm. would always tell me, he's all, you got to do something. You got to write songs. You can't just play drums. You can't just be the drummer. Oh. So if there's any advice that I'd give you is you got to write songs. Whoa. And you took that. Did it feel consequential coming from a guy like Don Henley versus it coming from your mom or dad or like an uncle or a brother did it feel like it landed harder because oh, it was a star well yeah well not only that he was a drummer yes <laughs> and you yeah, know right so we related in that way but yeah i you know i'd been listening to the eagles with my mom and my sisters and everything since i was a little tiny little kid so, yeah um coming yeah. from him it, it it didn't mean a lot but it meant a lot more as i got older yeah so, yeah. And you felt and actually started of, doing this thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a really great piece of advice. Like if you want to own a slice of the pie, yeah, you, you know, yeah. right. I mean, hopefully you can, I think, you know, what does it hurt to, uh, if you're a drummer, if you're a kazoo player, what does it hurt to try to create, try to write some music, try to get into the mix? You know? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that there are these roles typically that are set up and sort of defined like, well, drummers aren't, you know, aren't doing that or, you know, ah, the bass player isn't. But, you know, we've got, of course, Don Henley. I was just thinking about Steve Harris. Yeah. We did a video on him recently. I mean, you know, Steve writes. How the badass is Steve Harris? That's so badass. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. cool. So, yeah, I mean, take that piece of the pie. I really, I really like that idea. Um, yeah. Let me, let me, uh, run you through this so so you're 17 mm -hmm. you get a call from yep. brooks walkerman and am i yep. pronouncing his last name correctly you are yeah it was, a, it was just a 50 50 choice there <laughs> <laughs> what was the other option wackerman that's wackerman yeah i said walkerman oh i thought you said wackerman damn right. it <laughs> so i got it that's wrong right. yeah oh good i shouldn't wackerman. have even asked so you get a call from brooks <laughs> yeah <laughs> to join suicidal tendencies yeah um, and i mean there's so much we could go into here but the thing i wanted to ask you is being a teenager so you're a teenager and also i presume a robert trujillo fan oh of course yeah mm. how did you approach that gig at 17 being a fan of robert and is there anything you do differently now well i was shitting my pants to be quite honest with you I bet. um i mean i'm glad um, to hear you say that because that yeah like that means you're a human yeah <laughs> so going into that situation fortunately i had been a fan fortunately i'd known a lot of the songs and yeah. was familiar with the style he was a, a big influence on me so going in there it already sort of felt like home mm -hmm. and I grew up in the neighborhood. So, um, and I was really familiar with how Brooks played. So I got in there and it kind of, and we, we definitely locked, um, my approach inside was, all right, I'm going to walk out here on this stage and this is my fucking stage. Ooh, yeah. And that's what I had to tell myself inside to, to be able to pull that off double and, down and exude, give myself the confidence to mm. be able to do that because I could have sat here and, and thought to myself, which these thoughts obviously run through 
your mind but he's like oh my god you know robert was such a huge part of this band and i'm yeah. just some kid who's never had a gig coming yes. into this and what am i doing oh my god but i threw all that out and i just went in both feet in front of me and jumped and stomped as hard as i could and i played yeah. the shit out of that stuff i bet so that you know um i i would feel good about doing it hmm. And, um, you know, I could have been, uh, I, I didn't, oh, I would never want to come off cocky. And if I did, I apologize to anyone out there who may have thought that. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody has ever mentioned that to me, but they may say, oh, that guy's a douche. <laughs> but um, but you, if but I you... have, I, I really apologize. But I had to give myself that confidence inside oh, to do that. Of and course. Um, one of the things that... uh that Mike Muir did was always inspired me to want to be better and be better. And you gotta, you gotta do that better. It's gotta be better than that. Wow. So what would he was, say that about Josh? Like, like, was it about performance? Was it about recording? Was it, you know, what, what was parts it about coming up? Well, recording and coming up with parts and coming up with creative, um, parts, um, you know, in that band, the bass is like the lead guitar. Yeah, so, right. You know, you got to just be a lot of energy and a lot of excitement, a lot of movement. And hmm. so um, and and live stuff, too. I I again, going back to to trying to double down on the confidence thing, just jumping into the front of the stage, you know, yes. not waiting for an invite. This is my this is my fucking stage. Right. So. For that particular situation, that really helped me through until I, I got a hold and I made it my own. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> oh, love it, man. Yeah, because I feel, you know, not very many teenagers get an opportunity like that, right? Right, yeah. Uh, especially in, in such a legacy band. Oh. Um, I will say that I enjoyed... Um, so much doing the playing in that band i mean and and creatively it was pretty awesome to be able to just do whatever i wanted um well, it's really cool uh mike Muir and i have actually almost completed uh an album together uh, for another project that'll be coming out soon so i'm Very really cool. stoked on that too. it's like kind of a full circle Oh, so cool. Where you're yeah. contributing, where you're writing yeah. the, the music, I'm assuming, yes. or a good yeah. chunk of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exciting. Do you, uh, does it have a name yet? Do you know the project? Uh, that'll come out soon. Okay. It does have a name, but I'll mention it later. All <laughs> right. Yeah. right. I got to keep it under wraps. Ooh, I love mm -hmm. it. Man, that's exciting. And and totally, what a cool full circle moment, right? From yeah, and, teenager. And going back to Robert, I, I have um, made pretty good friends with him over the years and he's just an awesome awesome dude i'm awesome sure. player just so kind the same dude he's been you know since suicidal days even through yeah. all the the gigs that he's he's been in well and i came to robert through infectious grooves so me I mean, too I, yeah yeah such a huge fan yeah. of those records and i still i mean like the sarsipia skits are still like burned into my brain <laughs> and like i mean it's just crazy he, that band was a real formative part of how i thought about like like rock funk and and, totally. and then you've played in that band as well and that did that come then after your time in it was suicidal? around it was kind of simultaneous yeah um we were recording records for both at the same time yeah so um and then dean from infectious started playing in suicidal so it was a bit of a mesh um of both and then um but we did i remember a few shows we did do the infectious and then suicidal sets oh, like same show yeah like, yeah. would you, uh, would one open for the other? Would infectious, infectious open would for open. suicidal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So cool. So that was a lot of fun. Oh but man. That gig, man, as a bass player, as a musician is just, um, the energy is up there. Um, the vibes are cool. And I just got to play the shit out of my bass. Yes. Right. So, so then, right. There's, there are these other names on your on the list as well, like Daughtry. And I, you had that gig, you 
have been in that band until recently for a very yeah. long time. 15 years. Yeah. Being crazy. That's a, that's a good run. Yeah. And what did you have to change about the way you approached suicidal, about the way you approached infectious grooves, maybe your own inclinations of like playing aggressive bass to sort of fit into that zone? Well, obviously, you know, you want to, you want to make sure that you fit into the gig. Sure. You know, um, musically, it's quite different. Um, the, the approach my my approach of playing aggressive was still there hmm. um, through that, and they allowed that, which is you know you always want to make sure <laughs> uh, you're yeah. like, you're, you're cool? a little much, buddy. You're a little much, <laughs> which I've heard. Want that. Which I've heard, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> that's great. But um, going into that, you know, I just made made sure to do my research on who Chris was and what he really wanted and needed yeah. for that gig. Um, I did, I did get to play uh, a little more melodic with that gig. So that kind of took over, you know, with suicidal and infectious, it was a lot of chops and a lot of yes. fancy Slapping. stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But with, with um, Chris's stuff, I was able to throw in some melody and really just hold down all the stuff, which was yeah. cool. It was cool. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, and as, it, as bass players do. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I feel like sometimes with that simple, like, you know, quote unquote, simple stuff, sometimes that can be the most difficult to make feel good or, you know, there's so much space or there's, you know, there's opportunity. Like, you know, if you're just playing that one note, that one note has to sound and feel great versus yeah. playing a phrase of 16th notes, which, you know, can, can kind of blow by. In Absolutely. A, in a yeah. way. And so there's consequence to playing like a very simple part. Especially uh, in recording. Yes. You know, in television performances that oh. we were doing, you know, right. you, you watch that back and you're like, oh, my God, you heard that? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so with all of that space, mm -hmm. you really have to make sure that you're on it. I know that you have a bass in your lap. I do. <laughs> this and, is actually one of my new ones. Oh man, could you talk about that a little bit? So, Look at that yeah. thing. Hold on. I have the uh I have some of my uh So this is the um Music Man Sting, right? It's the four with uh block inlays. Yes. It's HH. It's a custom. And it's oh, it's, it's purdy. It's gorgeous. Is that like a is that like a sort of a silver burst or a nod gold. to that it's, sort of, it's a is it gold. gold? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it looks to me, there's an era of like late seventies or seventies totally. Gibsons. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Les Pauls yeah, that like, that were sort of like silver burst, but that kind of greened out and almost became gold bursty. Yeah. It gives black, me that vibe. Yeah. It's, it's a black burst. Yeah. So it's, um, but I love it. It sounds amazing. I love the uh, the hardware, black hardware, and um, they call it a lucky gold sparkle. Oh, it's killing! Can you can you play it a little bit for us? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh man, it sounds good. I, I feel like I see you with this style of instrument, right? Like you've been, how long have you been playing Stingrays or Ernie Balls in general? Oh, so, well, I had, so my cousin had a 1978 Stingray that he let me borrow for years and years and years and years. So that was my main base, even up to the time right when I got into suicidal. Yeah. So um, my formative years. And then I had a Stingray 5 that I used on those first two records and then um but i came back to them uh probably three years ago mm -hmm. and uh did some videos for the dark ray oh i do those which videos i love they're did so you, good do you have one of those no i don't have one i'd love to have one but the, the videos are amazing i mean it made me want one <laughs> <laughs> like oh my god you on stage just smashing that thing just and then the click of the switch, right? To change yeah. the drive sounds. Yeah. 
pretty great, man. Those basses sound amazing and really they inspire parts, you know, and having mm. it right there on on board. Yes. So killer. So killer. And you know, as you're as you're playing when you played that line just a minute ago, yeah. Uh, and I feel like I cut you off. I feel like there was no, more no, no, inside. No, no. And then I was no. like, <laughs> I'm here <laughs> <But> to hang. <laughs> hey man, me too. It's so, it's so great. I would actually, I mean, I think it would give a lot of value to people that, that are checking this out to just talk about your technique a little bit because you play hard. I do. And, and do. like, it, it seems like a default. And of course, not that you can't play softer, but it yeah. seems like your sound, right? Where you're, you're hitting hard with um, right hand. Yeah, definitely. Can you, can you show so, us that or talk about that a little bit? So I definitely like to dig in, and I think honestly it comes from, um, and this is going to sound silly, but it comes from not having an amp when I was a little kid. Yeah. So I yeah. had to make it sound like I thought it sounded cool. <laughs> yeah. Got a grindy. Yeah, really yeah. grindy and really aggressive and really sort of in your face. Yeah. And then part of the time I couldn't even hear myself. So that's why I started playing hard. <laughs> yeah. But when I started doing the suicidal stuff and I was playing like I play, it it worked. Yes. So yes. Um, digging in, you know. transition to not digging in <laughs> but yeah for for what i do um a lot of the times playing hard like that is kind of kind of the sound yeah yeah and flea flea actually does that too and that you know growing up listening to uh the chili peppers of course i'm sure that influenced me as well it, were you at all a rush guy were you a getty lee guy at all oh yeah yes yeah. okay yeah Another famous, you know, smasher, but it's interesting because I paying attention to your right hand just now and like asking mm -hmm. you this question, it's so cool because you're not Getty. Getty is almost like hitting the string. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, where you're kind of like pulling hard through I, the string. I pull through. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's very sure. different than Getty's attack, but it's like, you still look super relaxed. You're not. There, there's not a lot of tension in your arm I can see when you're doing it. Yeah, and the reason for that is um, to be able to get to the next place and to yeah. be able to not get exhausted. Right. Just from, but while maintaining kind of the grit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, is there any, could you, <laughs> I mean, could you break down any kind of, like if someone has a, a, a particular light technique mm -hmm. and they want to get a little more Josh Paul menace into their sound and their style. Is there a way like that you would talk to a student or talk to, you know, somebody kind of new that would like to have that smash about how to approach it? Yeah. Um, well, if you're, you know, a, a soft player and, and playing quote unquote properly, Proper sure. technique. Um, Proper technique, mate. You can always get a little overdrive in there. And not so it sounds um, distorted. Yeah. But so there's just a little bit of that something. So now when you are hitting the strings, it's going to sound like you're hitting them harder than you hmm. actually are. Hmm. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Um, I would say for someone who's not used to um, playing pretty hard, get the uh, crazy glue ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude i did not think you were yes um yeah because it tears up your hands right but, yeah but you know i think that if you're already if you're already playing and you're playing soft and that's just the, what works for you do yeah. that sure do that yep. if you want that extra sound get a little dirt on there yeah um but that's what i would recommend yeah cool and, yeah. and I love, uh, yeah, some new skin or maybe some crazy yeah. glue on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tears, it tears up your fingers and hands, but. 
But for you, this was not a switch. This wasn't no. a switch to playing hard. This is just how you've always played. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I came up playing really soft. And it's interesting because I hear that sound and I can do a facsimile of that sound and I can play hard and attack the string. And, right. Um, and I just, but it's not very, um, it's not natural for me. Like I have to put it on. It's like, you know, I'm like putting on a uniform. Right. Of like, I'm going to try to do this Josh Paul thing now. It doesn't come supernatural to me. Well, the, uh, the thing about soft players for me, I was like, you know, with a really soft touch, but they're still getting that punch and everything. I always, I was like, so enamored. I have been, I still am enamored by that. You know, yeah. I'm like, man, I wish, I wish I could do that. I have worked on it, but then I lose whatever it is that I have on my stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I you know? know what you mean. It's like, yeah, yeah. When, when you step into those other shoes, I mean, of, because of course you can play soft and of course I can hit the bass harder, but it's right. like, it, it seems to kind of, you go like, ah, but, but maybe I should just double down on this thing that I do. Well, and then you, know? you then you get into the world of, of adaptation again. Mm. So, all right. So I'm going to do this part and does it work like this or does it work like this? And how can I get it somewhere in between to where it yes. just works? Yes. Right. And, and I suppose it is nice to have both things, you know, playing really hard, smashing through the string or, you know, the Getty Lee crush right. or, or your style or like flea style pulling through the string really hard yeah. and also playing softly so that you can adapt and be well, versatile. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, there's, there's moments for all of that. And it's, it's extremely important to have all of that in your, in your pocket, in your tool belt, especially if you're trying to play with different bands or different artists or doing different records and different genres. Um, yes. I mean, I would sound like a total asshole if I was, you know, just like <laughs> over, you know, I don't know, Belinda Carlisle or something, <laughs> you know, you know Belinda what I'm saying? Like, I, of course. Yes. There's so, different gigs for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. um, hopefully, um, we all learn throughout our journey that, uh, what is appropriate. Yeah, right. And sometimes inappropriate is appropriate, hmm. depending hmm. on, you know, how far you want to go with it, how far you want to stick out. Right. I've been in sessions where where I was just messing around on something. You know what I mean? Where, like, the line may have been something like... And I did something like... And the producer's like, that's, that's the one. Like, <sighs> okay. So, and you know, don't be, I've, I said it earlier a couple of times, but don't be afraid to experiment. Mm -hmm. And when you say like mess around, I feel like it's a little humble. Like did in an environment like that, I mean, I know you're mm -hmm. just throwing a hypothetical out there, but like in yeah. an environment like that, where it's kind of contained, do you throw out an idea as, as sort of like a, ah, I'm just messing with this to, to, to wonder if it might be the well, right if thing. I, in my strange, <laughs> strange way of thinking, it's more of like, um, you know, when you think out loud, yes, it's, it's, it's basically like that. that. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully the producer or the artist or whoever's around, is going to say like, dude, stop it. Stop messing around. <laughs> like, will you please stop making noise now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to tune that damn thing? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh man. Yes. Okay. Hey, talk to me. We, we got to talk about slapping too, because okay. you slap the bass. Like when I first heard you play, I thought to myself, this is the only man alive that could step into the shoes of flea and, and do that gig justice, like crush a chili peppers gig oh, because man, you have you. that, like the punk and I'm a huge flea fan. So, and, and I too. know you are too. Yeah. Um, so I just mean that in the, in the utmost highest way possible, there's no one that could do it. You could do it. And thank you, man. Yes. That means so much because I'm such a, uh, a fan of, um, his approach and the band's music. So thank you. Same. I just think he's a genius and I, yeah. 
I love that punk rock aesthetic of like play every note like it's your last. Yeah, you know? and <laughs> so cool. you saw that video that he did back in the what is it, early '90s or late '80s or something like that. With like the instructional video. Yeah, yeah, yes. I had the VHS tape. Yeah, where he's playing with Chad Smith and and um, his attitude on that really spoke to me. Hmm. I was like, you know what, you're right, dude. Yes, play every single note like it's your last one, and and he's so uh, just cool as hell. Cool as <laughs> in hell. his playing, in his and, playing, and, right? And yeah. signature, and and of and course, I, personally too. I haven't met him, but yeah, I haven't either. I'd, yeah. I'd love to, man. Me too. Um, let me know if you meet him. <laughs> okay. Likewise, next time if you meet him, you yeah. Facetime me, and well, if I meet him, I'll Facetime you. Perfect. Okay, we'll I'm sure he'll call. love that too. Yeah. Hang on, bro. Hang on. I want to call my buddy here. Can you say hi? <laughs> Uh, dude that's great yeah but i mean you know flea is a great example of a guy who has um an incredible sense of style and personal identity but yet then has then has done other things and has played with tom york right and has played with alanis and has played right. with young mc and done some sessions and Absolutely. it just his trajectory just reminds me of yours as well where there's like a, a sonic signature that's so intense and unique and like really thumbprint and cool and yet uh, but you can also chameleon in you know you can play in daughtry and you don't have to you're not slapping the bass ferociously right. all the time i mean maybe right. you did occasionally but it 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 actually brings me to this idea of slapping the bass because you are a monster at it and i wonder you, too man. like can you speak to how you how you developed your slap technique and yeah. can you just show us maybe um, a little bit of how you play and uh, maybe an idea for someone coming that maybe is new to slap. Like what would you say to somebody that wanted to do it okay. that, you know, how would so, you start them out? Um, well, playing drums obviously has helped me tremendously, um, especially on the slap thing. Yeah. Um, I practice drum rudiments on the bass. Ah. So, for people who are trying to come up with slap lines, because I get that question a lot, actually, like mm -hmm. on Instagram and, and stuff like that. But um, so how do you come up with the slap lines? And uh, and um, my advice would be uh, first put on a drum groove or, or a metronome or whatever and just try to do drum rudiments, paradiddles, yes. you know. Um, but yes try to make them even try to work on the dynamic whatever you're trying to achieve and then go faster and then just do look up drum rudiments i mean exercises and try to mimic that on the bass and try to also pay attention to how long you're holding each note hmm. and then do it without notes as well and just do that for hours and then what i would do for hours and this is, I did home studies for a while, so I was yeah. able to. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. But, uh, yeah. Um, was just make beats on my bass. Oh, like, like, what do you mean? Can you break that down? So, like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, simple as that. Yes. Try to, if you hear a cool drum fill, try to mimic it on the bass until you get it, how you want it to sound. Oh, I love that. These are easy ways to just kind of just start playing and, and slapping. Um, but as far as uh, technique wise, um, those exercise, those exercises really did help me with speed, you know. Yeah, Ooh, but because you have a fast single thumb, like right. you can play quickly. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know like what I don't? connected to drums. Yes. Right. What I haven't done a lot is some of the double. Only because I can't get the same sound yeah. out of it. Yeah. You know, as doing... 
Ah, but I see. But you're you're almost you're almost sort of like strumming with it. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah. And are you when you play? Are you bouncing? Are you almost always bouncing away, or do you go through the string and stay? Um, uh, yeah, it just depends on where yeah. I need to go next. Yeah, right. But um, honestly, I, mean, I haven't thought about it too much on the. T- <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> this is why I don't teach, man. It's like I just kind of just do it. You're hey, teaching today, yeah, dude. You just, <laughs> I hope you're, teaching no, today. you're helping me through this. So thank you so much, <laughs> oh, and I hope pleasure. that the people out there watching are gaining something from oh, yeah. it because <laughs> of course yeah are you kidding me because you're not you're not down thumbing like flea i mean you know like flea has that pretty prominent sort of down thumb thing you know meaning like if this is the string right he's he's not parallel through he's sort of like hitting it this way yeah and i think honestly a lot of what Flea does has to do with the way his posture is while he's playing and how he's holding his bass. So low. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's not like funk guy. Yeah. He's not king. So and and as awesome as I think um those players are, I mean, phenomenal. uh, Yes. Especially for the stuff that they're doing. I don't think that it would sound what's the best way to put this? So you kind of have to approach playing through for that kind of music in mm. rock or punk rock or, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I try to pull, keep that approach on some of the even hip hop stuff that I do or funk stuff. And it just gives it that extra oomph. Yes. And then oh, it yeah. goes back to, to, you know, um, the delicate touch and playing a different, just of choices course. in technique. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I mean, God, it's like, you know, don't go changing Josh Paul uh, <laughs> because man, <laughs> but I do, I do work on other things though. Sure. You know, of course um, yes, to add them to the bag. Yeah. And, yeah. and just to see how far off base I am like, yeah. All right. Anyway, dad joke, but <laughs> <laughs> no it, it, uh, pun always intended. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. It's all good. Um, yes. But uh, just to see how far off I am from what everybody's, you know, what, yeah. what would typically be correct technique. Sure. Yep. I mean, I worked really hard on that double thumb thing because mm-hmm. there was a guy that I worked with that um, could do it and he yeah. sounded so good and funky and I couldn't do it. And I remember when I started, to, when I started, it was, it hurt. It yeah. felt strange and it was completely uneven, not the same sound. And I was just like, oh, this is impossible. Right. And for whatever reason, I, you know, I was really young and I just worked on it a bunch and it it yeah. came. But for me, it's it's similar to a pick. Pick, so exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm using it more in that kind of way when I do it. And I don't use it a lot. Right. But um, yeah, man. <sighs> well, tell you. When I've tried to incorporate that and again, I can do it, but I'm not, you know by any means a pro at it but when i've tried to incorporate it into the music that i make or the you know some stuff that i've done in the past it just didn't have that it didn't hit the same right yep yeah and because you have that thing man where i see you at the end of video sometimes like and then the video ends i'm like ah like like scream my god and you're right there's like a there's like a a ferocity and evenness of it's almost, it reminds me of like a single stroke roll. Like, yeah. Bah, 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 bah. You know, like that's the vibe I get from your and, thumb. And when I'm doing those things, I'm thinking about those drum fills. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it, one of my favorites was the Nirvana thing, you know, the smells like teen spirit, oh, which dude. was, what was that? The gap band that, or a uh, cameo <laughs> yeah, that he said, Dave that he, said, yeah, that's yeah. right. The gato, the gato, the gato. Punk thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, well, it makes so much more sense now. It's it's so cool. Um, Thank you, man. Before... Thank you for all the kind words. I'm oh, sorry. my God. Dude, it is, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's just so fun to get a little peek behind the curtain. You know? It's just <laughs> like crazy. Um, hey, you you mentioned that there might be another bass in the room. I don't know if that was for my eyes only oh, yeah. or if, it, or if no, that's no, for no. everybody's eyes. Hold on eyes. one second. Oh, this, dude. can you see this? I sure can. Retro 70s Stingray right here. You're saying this first in black. I think it's coming out in the fall. And this thing is so killer. Let me take some of the dirt off. 
So killer. Does it remind you of the of the old uh, late seventies bass that you played yes. ages ago? Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. The high end character is 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 slightly different. It's like it's in a different place. It's almost like a little bit higher and glassier versus yeah. the the other uh basses which are awesome. Like the one you were playing feels like a little more aggressive in like the upper mid range where this one Absolutely. feels like a little more smooth or something. Yeah, and that I think that's what I was getting at when I was it, to me it, it sounds and feels pretty vintage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, man. This is a cool bass, though. When is it Can't coming wait for out? You to check one out. Uh, I think it's in the fall. I'm not. I don't know an exact date, but it's. Uh, I mean, those. Whenever I just wanted to pull it out for you, just cause yeah, man. It's really cool. It's I got to play it. I had uh, <laughs> man. It's so cool. I had a um. A, a 2010 Stingray that was made for Guitar Center. It was red. Well, yeah. and, I, and I I sold it um, to my uncle, and I just got it back from him. He had it for a few years. I missed it. I got it back, but it's so cool, Josh. It's I'm, I'm just going to grab it for you really quick. Yeah, please. Get a kick out of it. Please, please. I don't have it plugged in, but I just wanted to show you and everybody too. This oh, was a 2010 beautiful. classic that was made for Guitar Center. And the crazy thing about it, right? White cover. Yeah. And then it has an ebony fingerboard, which is cool. And then it has roasted, you know, this big roasted neck. And oh, I think it was yeah. sort of like in the early days, I, I feel like roasting is happening more and more now. But in 2010, it felt kind of like, wow, like a, like a, a big novelty. It's got the yeah. mutes and, but. It's such how a often cool do you use it? Well, I mean, I just got it back. Oh, cool. But I've been playing, I mean, literally like two days ago. So I've been playing it a bunch, just trying to do my best, trying to do my best, Josh Paul, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You no, got dude, it. It's, it's so cool. It's such a voice, like a stingray, like the music man thing is such a thumbprint. It's Absolutely. so like, it just sounds like it, it, it is, you know, yeah. and I love basses that have that, like, we do this thing. Identity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was yeah. far, far better said than I was just stumbling there. Identity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you could, if you could, I ask this with everybody and I love, I love asking this question, but if you could travel back in time and and give a gift of perspective and a nugget of wisdom to a young Josh Paul. Mm. What would you say? What, what's something that you would like to tell your younger self? Patience. Hmm. I think work on your patience. Um, and what makes you say that? Well, so going back to the grass is always greener thing. So, you know, you're in a situation or you're, you're playing, and you look at someone, someone else, or you you see a gig, or you you look at it for a long time with with these rose colored glasses, yeah. or you look at a, a hear a song or a bass line or something. Why couldn't I come up with that or something right. like that? And until even you know five years ago, ten years ago, um, I didn't learn that. Oh. If you were just patient, all of hmm. these things are coming to you. All of these techniques, you know, that you're diving into, they're going to come. All of the um, creativity that you may be stuck on something, hmm. it'll come back. Life, life hits you in waves, right? So yeah. um, just wait, wait for that right wave. <laughs> hmm. And trust and, um, that it's coming. Yeah. And trust that it's coming. And, and, uh, I think that that lack of patience, I guess, was good and bad because it, it motivated me to want to get my ass out there and get yeah. on fire and just do everything and anything that I possibly couldn't say yes to everything and never say no. And, right. Um, but then, you know, on all of everything that I've done has been a learning experience. Hmm. 
So, um, I don't know if I learned from everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was an experience. It was, no, but um, I've done was an experience. But <laughs> I, I would say, um, just don't stress and have some patience. Hmm. That's what I would say to myself. Yeah. Now, um, I would also say, uh, uh, follow that Don Henley advice and write some damn songs. Damn man, that is that is killing. <laughs> that is yeah. such good advice, and what what a gift for him to give that to you at such an early age, and for and for you to hear it, you know, because it's one thing for somebody like that to say to somebody, he's, he's probably said it a lot, um, but it's another thing to act on it, dude. And you yeah. you did that, and so kudos to you, man. Thank you. How man. how can we support you? How can this community support you moving forward? What what uh, can you give us a URL? Can you talk about a record? Like what's coming up that you're excited yeah, about that we so, can support you? So I'm involved with a few different projects. Uh, that one being with Mike Muir that'll be coming out hopefully the end of the year. And uh, it'd be great if you guys would check that out. I'll, I'll be sure to keep you updated with the title and everything else coming out. And then uh, also involved with a project um, with Trevor Lukather and Nick Collins. I don't know if you know Nick. He's a drummer. Uh, he's actually Phil Collins' son. And uh, Steve Majora from Toto is, is playing. He's a keys guy. And uh, this guy, Emmett uh, Stang on vocals so um that record will be finished fairly soon and then i'm i also am in a band with uh called eat the wolf here in san luis obispo with my buddies brian ball and db and pat so that's been awesome too cool you know to jam out and do some stuff so it's yeah um if you want to follow me on instagram it's josh paul i'm always there um hanging out and trying to throw down as much as I can and having fun. So hit me up there and really do that. Everybody really check that Instagram out because it's frightening and wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I love that frightening and wonderful dude. It is man. It is quite the combination. I mean, it is like something to behold. I mean, truly you're, you're a singular voice, man. You have a thank real you, special thing and, I just, I can't thank you enough for being with us today. It was an honor to have you. Thanks oh, for man. imparting that wisdom. Thanks for playing a little too. So Dude. fun to hear you play. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank you guys for doing what you do. Um, you're a huge inspiration, not only to me, but for so many players out there. Growing up, I wish that you guys would have been out then. Oh man, I, mean, I feel the same about it. You, you guys yeah. are really fast tracking so much for players and, and in a deep way, not just a superficial, you know, way. So thank you guys. Ah, thanks, and uh, I appreciate awesome. you and thank you for having me. Oh, and my everybody gosh. out there again, I apologize for my stumbling over this. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Don't ever apologize. It's amazing. But, um, <laughs> uh, I appreciate you all out there and uh, let's connect. Incredible. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. We'll speak to you soon. All right, buddy. All right.